200 private legal practitioners from the 19 northern states have volunteered to assist the Kano State Governor Abba Yusuf in winning his governorship election appeal case at the Supreme Court. The news agency of Nigeria reports that he spoke under the banner of Abba Kabil Yusuf Volunteer Lawyers Forum for the 19 northern states and Abuja. Addressing the press briefing at Arewa House on Sunday in Kaduna, the spokesman for the lawyers, Mr. Yusuf Ibrahim, urged President Bola Tunubu and the Supreme Court not to allow Nigeria to become a one-party state, saying that it is an unhealthy democratic practice. They expressed concern over the independence of the judiciary in the country. The lawyers insisted that the rule of law must be obeyed to ensure the vote of every Nigerian is counted during elections. The father expressed solidarity with Yusuf while opining that the appeal court judgment in favor of the All Progressive Congress was a clear miscarriage of justice. We volunteer as private legal practitioners to participate in the litigation in solidarity with Governor Yusuf at the Supreme Court of Nigeria. We want to represent the truth in the fight to reclaim his mandate and that of the people of Kano State, Ibrahim added. The group also demanded a reworking of the Electoral Act. It is pertinent to state here that the Electoral Act needs a holistic reworking to address these anomalies of our judicial system and democracy if we must save it, he said. According to the group, pre-election matters must be seen to be addressed as no longer litigable issues after the winner of an election has been declared. In another news, it has been uncovered that the president Bola Tinubu-led government has opted for used high-capacity buses for mass transit, despite a hefty 100 billion naira budget allocated for transportation solutions. The buses were seen at the Federal Secretariat car park in Abuja, where a team of panel beaters, technicians and painters worked diligently to address the evident wear and tear. The decision to acquire these vehicles comes in the wake of fuel subsidy removal with the government aiming to mitigate transportation challenges faced by Nigerians. Notably, the buses belonging to the Federal Ministry of Transport are part of a palliative program intended to reduce transportation costs. Investigation revealed that these buses, although promised as part of an agreement with organized labor, exhibited worn-out seats, smashed windshields, and aged tires. The refurbishment process involved panel beaters rectifying body damages and painters restoring the bus's appearance with traces of oil seen dripping from some engines. Contrary to these findings, Mr. Olujimi, the press officer of the Ministry of Transport, denied the ownership of these vehicles when approached for confirmation. In a text message response, he stated, They are not, to my knowledge, thanks for asking. The three passenger capacity buses are part of the compressed natural gas CNG powered fleet, a commitment arising from the Memorandum of Understanding signed with organized labor. On October 15, 2023, the government asserted that these CNG powered transit buses would significantly reduce transportation costs and promote CNG as a petrol alternative. However, concerns have risen among Nigerians regarding the safety of these refurbished vehicles especially given the challenging state of the country's roads. Many criticize the government for jeopardizing citizens' safety by opting for used buses instead of fulfilling its agreement with organized labor. Recalling the backdrop of the first subsidy removal, the Trade Union Congress and the Nigeria Labor Congress had initially announced an indefinite strike on October 3rd, but later suspended it on October 2nd. As part of the agreement, the government committed 100 billion naira for high capacity CNG buses, along with plans for 55,000 CNG conversion kits and state of the art CNG stations nationwide. While the government aims to kickstart the auto gas conversion program with pilots across 10 campuses nationwide by November, the contentious decision to procure used buses continues to spark debates over the prioritization of citizens' safety in the transportation sector. In another news, doctors, health workers in Just University Teaching Hospital resign every week over relocation. That is from the chief medical director who is lamenting. The Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors confirmed 
the development citing poor working conditions and failure of the government to carry out recruitment. The chief medical director of the Joss University Teaching Hospital, Plateau State, Dr. Pokop Bupwada, has described the dwindling number of medical personnel in the hospital as alarming. He disclosed that it has become a tradition to receive resignation letter from medical personnel who seek greener pastures outside Nigeria every week. It was reported on Saturday that the shortage of medical doctors and other healthcare professionals continued to bite hard across Nigerian major teaching and general hospitals. The NARD had confirmed that at a ward at the Obafemi Awolo University Teaching Hospital, Ileife, Oshun State, which is the Behavioral Science Psychiatry Section, has also been shut down due to shortage of personnel. Reporters had also said that the House of Representatives Committee on Health raised concerns over relocation of Nigerian doctors and nurses abroad, which had caused a decline in the country's health manpower. The committee had disclosed that due to such rush abroad, the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, for instance, has five wards comprising 150 beds, which have been shut down over shortage of personnel. The chairman of the committee, Dr. Amos Magaji, had described the situation as worrisome, saying the legislative arm is working toward nipping the increasing rate of Nigerians going abroad for medical tourism in the board. Meanwhile, speaking with Vanguard, the Jude chief medical director, Wata, who attributed the development to what he termed the pull and push factors, advocated for immediate replacement of vacant positions in Jude for effective service delivery. While expressing concerns about acts of sabotage, he highlighted obsolete and inadequate work tools as well as inadequate power supply, among others. He said, Jude is a center where excellence is being pursued. We have great teachers, great consultants, and great staff working to serve lives. Some of the equipment that we use has become obsolete and needs to be changed. Every week, I receive a letter of resignation from staff who are relocating from Nigeria to other countries, doctors, nurses, and other health workers. I see a lot of resignation among a particular group, radiographers. After interacting with some of them, one of the reasons why they are leaving is because they want a better working environment. Emmanuel Iwanyangu, President General of Ohanes in Igbo, has said that Igbo forebears are the pioneers and heroes of modern Lagos. Iwanyangu stated this in a press briefing video that has gone viral. He was indirectly responding to the comment of the Oba of Bini, Oba Iware II, made in relation to the origin of the state, which generated controversy. The monarch had said that Lagos State was founded by Binis. But speaking on the role of the Southeast in the development of Lagos, Iwanyangu said Igbo forebearers made parts of the state habitable. He argued that when Lagos was made the federal capital territory, the Igbos rose to the challenge of investing to make the state befitting. Iwanyangu said Igbos have been part of this country for a very long time. When Lagos became the federal capital, the development of such territory was a challenge in all countries. The Igbo forebearers, most of whom are dead today, rose to the challenge of that time. The challenge of that time was investment to make Lagos befitting as a federal capital territory. This is how the Igbos moved to Lagos by a sense of patriotism. Igbos converted swampy lands to habitable places. They built businesses, homes, schools, and developed Lagos. These pioneers of our forebears are the heroes of the time, the heroes of what we call today a very strong Lagos. The Igbos in Lagos are highly respected citizens. Respected Yorubas and Igbos built very solid relationships with each other. Igbos are the great shareholders if Nigeria is a corporate body, he said.